And welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is five unique builds for five commanders where I take five commanders and find different ways to build them. And in this episode in particular, I believe every single one of these is referencing another video I did. And that's how this stuff happens a lot is I'm making a video about some other topic and it just sort of hits me and I scribble it down in my little diary. That is certainly the case here. I think every single one of these, I came up with the idea from another video and I will start out with Ruhan of the Four Mori, which is a, this is an OG C11 commander, I guess, right? And this is a case where it is always, in my opinion anyway, every Ruhan of the Four Mori deck is played exactly the same way, which is I have a four mana commander that is a 7-7. Seven seven, so I have a cheap, a, a big commander for cheap mana. And I do the Voltron strategy. Of course, at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose an opponent at random, and it, it attacks that player this combat if able. So your commander has to attack, and it attacks someone at random. That's the drawback, right? Every Ruhan deck I've ever seen was built that way. This used to be a way more popular commander, isn't nearly as popular anymore. I'd never see this commander anymore. And I brought this up in a video, my trying to build with the worst cards video, because I had built a, a deck with this commander where I was like, man, I don't like the way people build that commander. I don't think that's a great way to go. I don't think it's a great strategy. The Voltron strategy in general doesn't work great in the commander format, not nearly as good as it used to anyway. And attacking your opponents at random, it just not a great game plan in my opinion. And the card that I talked about in that video was Keldon Battle Wagon, which that is, it certainly is a card that you could throw in your Ruhan deck, regardless of the strategy you're doing, because if I, at the beginning of combat, you know, roll the dice or whatever form of random picking you're using, and I'm attacking a guy who I don't actually want to attack, or maybe I can strike a deal, politics, all that kind of stuff, I can tap my commander down with the Keldon Battle Wagon. And then of course, because it's tapped, I can't attack with it. So there, I, I can forego the attacking for that round, but also now I get a really big Keldon Battle Wagon that I can attack with. And that strategy works there, but also you can entirely build your deck that way. A combination of ideas, and again, I, I had done this idea myself, where you have a lot of ways like that Calden Battle Wagon or like Impeller Giant was a card, a really interesting one that I found that actually fits that strategy as well. Tap and untapped red creature you control other than Impeller Giant. Impeller Giant gets plus X, plus O until in a turn where X is the power of the creature tap this way. So your commander gets tapped down because obviously it's a red creature. Then you don't have to attack with it and your Impeller Giant becomes a 10-3, very similar scenario there. So you have lots of ways of, yes, tapping down your creatures, but also taking advantage of having a big power without actually attacking, right? Whenever you see a big power, typically you want to be attacking with that creature. Funny enough, you can tap down your Ruhan to your Impeller Giant and then tap that down <laughs> as well. You can just go down tapping all your creatures to each other creature and then maybe the one at the very end you attack with. But you find other ways that you don't necessarily have to attack with, right? Any of those, not necessarily a fling effect, but your creatures dealing damage equal to their power work as well. And then of course you would fill the deck up with other creatures. I mentioned Phyrexian Dread not in that video as well, creatures that have a really good ratio, let's call it, where they have a really, really small mana value compared to their big power where they work with all those other scenarios, right? And Friction Dreadnought is one example, but there's a lots of others as well, of a creature that has a really small casting cost compared to its power, similar to your commander. That would be the deck, where I'm filling my deck up with creatures like that, that have some really bad drawback, maybe they don't allow me to attack with them, but then I have other effects that I can use them for. And you could even just throw the Warstorm Surge effects in there as well, where I don't really care if the creature can attack or not, or if it has some horrible drawback, I just want the ETB of it entering the battlefield so I can throw damage around. So that's the deck. The deck is I'm building around creatures that have a small mana value compared to their power toughness, I guess. In another video, my Monolith Commanders video, which I'm happy to say is, is getting a lot of views and a lot of feedback. I think it is an important thing to talk about in the format. Your lock of Scorch Thrash I talked about in that video, and I pointed it out as the most monolith commander of all monolith commanders because it has an ability a player losing unspent mana causes that player to lose that much life that is 
completely unusable if your commander is not on the battlefield. There is no other card that does that. And if you are only building around that ability, it makes it so that if your commander is not on the battlefield, your deck isn't doing a whole lot. And in fact, it might be doing nothing at all. And in fact, it might even be helping your opponents if you have those mana doubling effects like a lot of people do in their Yurlock decks. So how do we fix that scenario, right? How do we fix the scenario of, I want to play a Yurlock deck, I actually want to use that mana burn ability, I think it's really neat, but I don't want to build a monolith commander deck. That is what I'm tackling here. How can we build a Yurlock deck that is not a monolith commander deck? Well, our commander, of course, as most commanders do now, have an ability that plays into the first ability, pay one and tap each player, adds black, red, and a green. So you already have a an ability that plays into the first ability. Of course, you can be using that ability on your turn when your opponents can't use the mana, and that's going to cause the mana burn. And if we build around only that, that will make it so that our deck maybe still is a little bit of a monolith. I mean, you're not going to completely get away from it, but we're going to get away from the problem of now all those mana doublers and all those things that require my commander to be in play are going to make it so that I'm going to avoid that situation. I'm going to avoid the situation of my opponents now just get double mana off that mana flare and the mana burn thing is never going to be a possibility because my commander is not on the table, right? So how do we do that? How do we make it so that we can actually use our commander's ability? It is a really neat one, but also if my commander gets removed, I'm not completely screwed. And I think the best option here is the tapping untapping theme. As I said, your commander has a great ability that adds mana to your opponent's mana pool. So what I can do as an example is my commander comes down. I have a thousand year elixir. That would probably be the easiest example. So of course I can use my commander right away. I immediately tap it to put three mana into everyone's mana pool. Of course I can use the mana. So we already have that added advantage. I'll use one of that mana to activate my thousand year elixir, untap my commander, and then tap it again. Now all my opponents have six mana in their mana pool that likely they can't use. So they will be taking six damage as soon as I pass phases. Now I imagine a lot of people are probably doing that a little bit, but they're probably not doing it entirely, which is how this deck would be built in my opinion. It would be untapping, haste enablers, all of that, where not just my commander, right? Again, we're not building around the mana burn ability here. We're building around the second ability of each player adds. That ability happens to work with our commander's first ability, but if our commander's dead, now I cast another creature that has a great tap ability that I want to be tapping right away, that I can untap with my thousand year elixir, or I can untap with my seeker of the sky break or all the untappers that I'm going to put in this deck. That's the theme of the deck. I know it seems like, okay, aren't we doing the same thing? No, 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 no. I'm going to be putting a whole bunch of things in this deck that you probably would never see in a Yurlock deck. I'm going to be putting a bunch of creatures with really great tap abilities. I'm going to be putting untappers in the deck and I'm going to be putting haste enablers in the deck so I can tap them right away. And then I can likely go the entire game without ever casting my commander and the deck will work perfectly fine. I don't actually need my commander, but I can use my commander to probably close out the game, right? If I have a couple untappers in play and a haste enabler, it's very easy for me to cast my commander on like turn seven or eight, tap it, untap it three, four, five times even. All my opponents just take 15 damage the first time I cast my commander. It's essentially kind of your win con in the deck but it is not completely necessary in order for the deck to work. I think that's a way better strategy to go with your lock. All right, let's talk about Lagrella the Magpie. And, and again, I'm referencing a video I did recently. I talked about how I've changed my deck building style. And in that video, I mentioned a specific deck and a deck idea I've, I've come back to a few times, which is the essentially containment priest idea of I am exiling my opponent's creatures, but they don't get them back. And in that video, as I talked about the whole monolith commander's idea, I could switch out the commander for that deck. I had talked about Boromir works with that strategy because it's a blue white deck. I had talked about Sten and I actually might go with Sten in that idea. There's a couple of commanders that you could work there. And I had a few people in the comments of that video bring up Lagrella the Magpie, which of course is white blue, also green. I'm just doing the white blue version, but you could certainly do a Bant version here. So that idea you could superimpose into a Lagrella deck 
just by adding green, obviously, because when it enters the battlefield, exile any number of other target creatures controlled by different players. So it is a commander that can exile your opponent's creatures. It's blinking your opponent's creatures, essentially. So it works with the containment priest idea, hollowed moonlight, mist caller. There are other ways to do it. Again, I'm not going to get into all of that because I already went over that. So if you're interested in that idea, if you're interested in either doing that idea with a different commander or doing that idea, maybe you want green, maybe you just want to make a Lagrella deck. That is a really good idea that does indeed work with Lagrella. So doing that containment priest sort of idea, you can go check out that video and see all the things I'm doing there and you can do it here as well. And because you have green, you might be able to throw some other ideas in there. So in this case, I am taking an idea I already had and sort of superimposing it on a different commander. If you're at all interested in that idea, it is a different way to go with a Lagrella deck, I think, unless people are already doing that. If not, there's an idea for you. All right. In another video, I guess my personal decks video, which I did a couple of weeks ago, I talked about my Bralin deck and I talked about how I have that funny little ability at the bottom because of course it's a partner with commander that I'm not actually using a partner for and you can pay one and target shark gains trample until end of turn and I it always bugged me a little bit because of course I'm doing the discard theme there but it always bugged me a little bit that I had that ability on my commander that I wasn't actually using there are no mono red sharks there are none not a single shark is mono red unfortunately however we do have changelings and I talked about it in that video how I added taurine mauler to the deck because that's already a great creature in the commander format that happens to work extra good because of course it's a changeling which means it's a shark which means i can pay one and give it trample i thought that was a neat fit there and then i thought well wait a minute doesn't shabraz the partner that it's supposed to be with have a similar ability and of course it does pay a hybrid azorius mana so white and blue Target human gains flying until end of turn. So the idea here is, and I actually think this is a pretty good idea, human tribal, white, blue, human tribal. Your commander is Shabraz, the sky shark. And of course, this isn't very niche at all. This is not a very fringe idea, in my opinion. Now, the other part, whenever you draw a card, put a plus one counter on Shabraz and you gain one life, you're drawing cards in every commander deck anyway. I don't think you need to even build around that. I'm sure it would be not difficult for you to find humans because of hu human, I think, is the most popular creature type in the entire game of magic. So not going to be difficult for you to do human tribal and white and blue colors. It's also not going to be difficult, I don't think, for you to find humans that will fit the plus one, plus one counter, draw a card, gain one life theme, all of that. I think you could very easily do that as well. There's a lot you could do here, but essentially you are doing Azorius human tribal and Shabraz is your commander. I think that's a really funny way to go with Shabraz. Of course, we're doing the partner without. I guess you could do red as well and add in Bralin. Bralin is a human, obviously, so that would work. But the idea here is essentially Azorius human tribal and Shabraz is your commander, giving all your humans flying because of course the majority of humans don't have flying. So that actually has a pretty good advantage there. And I think it's a really neat idea. And I will end off with a commander that I have revisited a few times on my channel, Kethic Crucible Goliath. I made a deck originally with this where I went with a particular theme that I will not be going with here. And then I talked about this in, I think my favorite commanders from last year. This was my, one of my favorite commanders from last year. I think it is very unique. And I also brought this up in my last five builds video about how you could do the secret commander thing. And I am revisiting it once again, because I actually went down that road myself. And now I'm actually going to be throwing out concrete ideas that you can do here, right? So the idea with the secret commander thing, right? I'm going specifically down that road. The idea here is I am using my commander only to specifically hunt for creatures, right? So again, getting away from the monolith commanders thing, I'm only going to have to use my commander once, maybe twice, right? That's it. Again, I talked about this in my deck building fallacies video that I did a couple of weeks ago as well, where I talked about, yeah, you're not supposed to be using your commander all the time. That's the whole idea. The whole idea is my commander is only used to sort of enable me to do something else in my deck. And then if it dies, whatever, don't care, leave it in the command zone. I don't really need it. So the question is, what creature are you hunting for? And I'm going to throw out some specific ideas here so that maybe you guys can go down that road. What you need in order to make this work, I think, is a cheap commander. And of course, it can't be legendary. It has to be a non-legendary creature. And it has to be cheap in order for you to guarantee get it. Less than three 
is what I'm going with here because I think you want a lot of three mana value. There's just a lot of great creatures. Like Morbid Opportunist is a creature like Midnight Reaper, right? A lot of those, I draw cards when creatures die. You're definitely going to want in this deck. So that means the creature you're hunting for has to be below three because you're going to be sacrificing three mana value creatures if you sacrifice a three mana value creature that guarantees you get that two or one mana value creature, assuming you don't have any others. Although you could have a couple, you could have one or two or even three creatures below three mana value that you will guaranteed get at least one of them. And then if you do it again, you'll get the other one as well, right? So the question is, what creatures are going to be one or two mana value that are worth building an entire deck around? I will throw it a few. I'll start with Goblin Welder. I think that's a great one. Obviously a really, really powerful effect. And on top of that, because it's one mana value, it will allow you to do the two mana value creatures if you want to. However, I will point out that Goblin Engineer, which is doing something very similar, is two mana value. So if you have both Goblin Engineer and Goblin Goblin Welder in the deck. That will allow you to sacrifice those three mana value creatures to get either or. They're both great. They both have upsides. I would say Goblin Welder is ultimately better, but Goblin Engineer allows you to do the tutoring thing. It also allows you to have a backup where you're not just building around my Goblin Welder and then it gets exiled and now I'm screwed. Now what do I do? I have a backup plan in Goblin Engineer and it also works really, really well because you can sacrifice artifact creatures to your commander's ability, right? I play a Pilgrim's Eye, which works already, go get a land, then on my end step, sacrifice to my Kethic and go get that Goblin Engineer, Goblin Welder, and then I can bring the Pilgrim's Eye back, reuse it again, right? I can bring it back with either of those creatures and then sacrifice it again to my Kethic to go get the other one, right? So the artifact creatures that are three mana value, which there, there's a lot you could put in this deck, will work very nicely in that theme, right? It all synergizes well together. Another really funny one you could use is Dark Supplicant, uh, one ball black mana, human cleric, one, one. Tap, sacrifice three clerics, search your graveyard hand and or library for a card named Cyan of Darkness and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So this is another funny direction that I might actually go myself where my, my secret commander is sort of a creature that also searches. Again, that works with the goblin engineer sort of as well. So if I'm hunting for a creature that also itself can go hunt for stuff, that gives me a lot more to build around, right? And this one, again, just like with the goblin welder, goblin engineer thing works in the sacrifice theme. I'm already doing the sacrifice thing here with my commander and the dark supplicant as well. So I'm in a little bit of a cleric tribal here. Again, that's not difficult to do. Lots of great clerics that you could already put in this deck in black. I'm hunting for my dark supplicant. I get it. And then I use that to then go get my scion of darkness. And so the scion of darkness is sort of the secret commander in this deck. So that's another neat way you can go with it. So I went down that road. I looked up the creatures that are two mana value or less that will also allow you to search for other things. I, I think that might be the best way to go with this deck. There are a few. There are a few creatures in red and black that are two mana value or less that once you get them, then you can use them to go search for other things. And so you can build around any of them, or if you want, you could build around a bunch of them. And that might be the best way to go. Again, you're not putting yourself so much in a box where I'm building around exactly one of them. I could put two or three of them. And, you know, it's random chance which one you get, but once you get it, then maybe in the next turn, you can go get a different one. And they all work together fairly well, I think. But that is a really, really interesting way to go with Kethic, in my opinion, where I am building around the secret commander thing. I use my Kethic to go get that one or two mana value, I think is best creature and put it directly into play. That creature is the creature that I'm actually building around, but that creature also has a tutor ability that I can go get other stuff that maybe I'm building around as well. Really neat way to go with this commander, I think. That is it. That is all five interesting builds for five commanders. You guys let me know if you at all are interested in any of these ideas. I might end up building some of these decks myself. Typically I do because I really like some of these ideas I came up with, to be quite honest. That is it for today though. And thanks for tuning in.